Hi, yes. Um, here we are at the end of the day on Sunday, and I've been reading a lot of posts about, um, from especially these uh, some ladies that were crying and not being able to receive Holy Communion today. And twice so far I've had to tell somebody, sorry, I just can't give you communion at this time. So what do you do with this unmet desire to receive Holy Communion, which is a good and holy desire that Christ has put into your heart, that the Holy Spirit puts into your heart? What do you do with it? Is it just a total injustice against God's will? Well, obviously, Right now it's not. God is allowing this and through our leaders he's told us through our own safety that we can't gather. And so what can we do with this? So one thing I want to encourage you is to see that perhaps God is calling you to go deeper into this thirst and hunger that you have for the Lord Jesus. It reminds me of Saint Mary Magdalene. Remember when she goes to the tomb and she's looking for Christ and she says, Jesus said to her that he didn't know it was Jesus. Woman, why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned, Rabboni. Christ looks to all of you. So St. Mary Magdalene is a special uh, saint. I think we should ask her intercession, right, for this longing to have Christ, right? his flesh, his body, blood, soul, and divinity, to be able to receive him. And this year, I think it's no coincidence that we heard in a Pew study that 60% of Catholics don't believe in the real presence of Christ in the Holy Eucharist. Um, of course, of those who attend Mass every Sunday, it's 30%, but still, that's very low number, and it's unacceptable. And so I think this is a sacrifice that you can offer to our Lord, and to long for him and to, to share this suffering with him, this longing for him, offering it up for the people that don't hunger for him. It reminds me of the prayer of the children of Fatima. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. And then you can add in the most blessed sacrament. And just St. Uh, Gregory the Great in his... Uh, talking about uh, Mary Magdalene in, the, in a breviary, July 22nd, the Office of Readings, he says, talking about Mary Magdalene, at first she did not find, but when she persevered, that, but when she persevered, it happened that she found what she was looking for. When our desires are not satisfied, they grow stronger, and, becomes, and becoming stronger, they take hold of their object. Holy desires likewise grow with anticipation, and if they do not grow, they are not really desires. As David said, My soul has thirsted for the living God. When shall I come and appear before the face of God? I was wounded by love. My soul is melted with love. In other words, press into that desire, offer that desire to the Lord, and keep deepening in that desire, right? That's the, the good thing that can happen. Instead, we don't want to numb our desire for the Lord in the Eucharist. So the, the way we keep this desire going is we do visit the tabernacle. We do make acts of spiritual communion. My God, I believe that you're truly present here in the Eucharist, and I cannot receive you at the moment, but come into my heart spiritually. And so to make a spiritual communion, receive him spiritually, and tell him you long for him, say, thank you, Lord, for the Eucharist. I can't wait to receive you. And I pray that this will that in this time of darkness, you could say the light of who we are as Catholics will shine brighter. The light of our teachings of the Holy Eucharist uh, will shine brighter. I mean, we were the last, I would say, Christian group to meet. I mean, they were, we were meeting um, because right up until nobody met, because with other, I'm sure other groups too, but it was because of our faith in the Eucharist, right? that we need to be with the Lord. We want to be with the Lord in the Eucharist. That's why Christians started going to Mass on Sunday. As, as Paul writes in the Acts, that they met on the Lord's Day, the first day of the week, for the breaking of the bread and the Scriptures, right? The breaking of the bread is the, the way they refer to the Holy Eucharist, which truly is the body and blood of the Lord. And we're so blessed to have Him. And He's right here. And so 
I am praying for all of you and in sharing my longing, uh, my adoration on behalf of all of you that this virus may pass. And after this um, night, this long, that after this long Good Friday, um, we may have the joy of the resurrection to receive the glorified body of Christ in the Eucharist. May God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.